Over the course of this training series, we've discussed maintenance quite a bit, um, and that's for good reason. That's the number one factor determining whether a site is successfully established or ultimately fails. Um, we've looked at a site that has average maintenance conditions um, and talked about the tending of the individual trees. Um, so on today's episode, what we're gonna focus on is the other part of maintenance, which is the vegetation management component. Uh, right here in this area, I see two problems um, right away. Uh, first of all, this area here, this about 20 foot swath, um, has not clearly not been mowed um, lately, uh, likely not this growing season. There is some evidence um, that the herbicide was applied here in the spring. Um, so what probably is going on here is a miscommunication between the contractor and myself. Um, maybe the contractor thought that they weren't supposed to mow here, but they have been mowing other places, so we just have to make sure we uh, get that figured out moving into the fall so that when he comes to do his fall mowing and spraying, he includes this area. You'll have this situation a lot. It's not the end of the world. As you can see, a lot of our trees are still doing pretty well, but we need to make sure that that mowing uh, does get taken care of moving into winter. We do all this vegetation management around trees for two big reasons. Um, one is to increase the resources that are reaching those seedlings, so light and water, so that they can quickly um, grow into saplings. Um, the other factor here is meadow voles. Um, they will eat, they will girdle a lot of trees. They get planted in their habitat, um, and their habitat happens to be where we're usually planting riparian forest buffers, and that's uh, areas that are wet um, and that have very dense herbaceous vegetation. Um, and so the maintenance really just boils down to um, mowing, in between the trees to you know reduce the the competition for resources um, and to reduce the vole cover um, and then also making sure that there is an area around each tree that is clear of vegetation so that the voles don't have cover and they won't access the tree We're kind of standing in a little wet depression area that um, when the contractor was out here doing the mowing in you know early june or so um, it was probably so wet here that he couldn't get through with his equipment. So this is a pretty common circumstance that we have on a lot of our sites. Um, sometimes you quit, no equipment will be able to get through, you know, no matter what. Um, so it's really important to be able to think about that, account for that in your planning, um, and make sure, for example, that I'm asking, well, your, your uh, herbicide ring should be even wider in areas that you're not able to access. And again, this is the kind of thing that you'll you'll pick up over time as you visit a site over the entire growing season. Oftentimes we're planning these plantings certain times of the year, um, and you might only see a site once or twice before you go ahead and, and plant it or write your planting plan. Um, and so the, the back end uh, is, is not really kind of the end of the process, that's a continuation of it. We can make adaptations, we can make changes um, as we see what the landscape looks like over the course of the growing season. So. In this instance, that would be adapting to say, well, let's increase herbicide use um, in the areas that can't be reached by machinery um, or some other solution uh, like that. What it looks like is we're just gonna scour an area, you know, right around each tree. Um, so, not that anyone doesn't know what weed whacking looks like, but demonstrate that real quick. Again, it doesn't have to be complicated. There's a lot of ways we can save some time and money um, by just doing some of this stuff ourselves. So I prefer to really wear a lot of PPE when I do this uh, because I prefer to not get poison ivy in my eye. <laughs> okay. And all we're going to do um, Obviously, it would be more efficient if we had somebody come out with a brush hog 
uh, and, and take care of this for us. You know, it takes a little while to do this with a string trimmer, but again, in a pinch, in small areas, we can prepare an area that's going to be free of vole habitat all winter long here, and then hit it hard with, with herbicide and the kind of more official, you know, proper maintenance next growing season. Just wanted to very briefly show kind of how it works to do this bowl control. Um, you can see there already this herbicide ring, uh, a pre-emergent was sprayed on this when the spraying was done this spring, um, but this is what it would look like. Um, there are different um, settings, nozzles that you can get for your um, for a backpack sprayer. I would recommend a backpack sprayer if you think you might do this a little bit more, um, because uh, if you're doing acres and acres and acres you're not going to want to carry something with one hand but if most of your work is focused on um, a small spot treatment of invasives a pump sprayer works just fine um, even just the small hand squirter works just fine um, but the backpack sprayer is pretty versatile um, it just uses pressure to, to pump through the, the hose um, and I, this is not even an aftermarket nozzle um, pretty easy to just spray your ring keep going spray your ring uh, keep We are currently standing in a riparian forest buffer that was planted about 18 years ago, and as you can see, it did really, really well. You really don't see uh, buffers that were this successful that were planted that early. That was before we had really figured out the, the management and the maintenance necessary to have decent survival, um, but here we are in one that did really well. Um, you'll see that there are areas that are open where trees didn't do too well there. Um, and honestly, for a long-term management perspective, there's a couple ways we can do it. In my opinion, to have a gap um, of open area where we have a lot of wildflower species, where we have some raspberry and some other good understory um, components coming in. We have some natural regeneration of walnut and things like that coming in. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing to have little gaps in there. Um, some landowners would rather have just kind of a pretty even aged canopy and they would like to plant um, some more artificial regeneration in these patches so that is a long-term management thing that you can do. The biggest thing um, in my book is managing for invasives. Um, so one of the species that you'll still struggle with um, even when the canopy is starting to close is Multiflora rose. Um, uh, it's everywhere on our landscape, very aggressive, spread by birds, um, and it, it can come in um, even in, in moderately shaded areas, um, it'll still be a problem. So um, frequent inspection for invasive plants, um, even when the buffer is 18 plus years old, um, is still a really good thing to do. Whether that's, that sort of workload longer term is on the landowner or still on you, um, is kind of you know up to your program, um, but it's something to, to consider and to think about. Um, and with, as with any invasive plant, uh, early detection and just constant vigilance is the best way to prevent them from getting out of hand and requiring a lot more resources to get them under control.